welcome back to the channel welcome back to the vlog today you join me in my most favorite place to take some photographs the stunning Dingle Peninsula in Kerry and I'm here for a weekend's photography and it's my first time ever actually coming here for an entire weekend so I normally come here for sunset but today I'm going to come here and stay here until Sunday so that's going to give me the opportunity to get some shots actually at sunrise or the dawn in Dingle and I've never had that opportunity before so I'm really excited now to see what lies ahead and also I'm going to meet up with a buddy of mine Tiermada Donovan you might remember him from previous episodes on my channel but I'm going to spend the weekend with him so I think we're going to have a great laugh and lots and lots of fun is going to be ahead of us but as I was starting out this trip I said you know what I packed my bag and I've actually got quite a lot of, of equipment with me and I wanted to go through that because it's been a while actually since I did a what's in my bag I think probably around about four years ago so my gear has changed quite a lot over the last four years and I really wanted to go through the different tools that I would use to capture my photos on many different trips that I would go throughout the year but this now is going to be a what's in my bag weekend edition so starting I suppose really with my bag so the bag that I use is still the same bag that I'd always use it's my trusty low pro powder and this is a phenomenal bag because it has so much capacity that it can hold it's extremely comfortable as well for me to be able to use on a regular basis and i actually did a review video on this bag i think around two years ago and i'm still using this bag to this day so that's my trusty bag that carries everything for me and it's really really good if you haven't seen that episode actually where i've done the review i'll link to that up here but for now i'm going to go through what i have in my equipment to capture my photos so starting with my main workhorse and that's my Canon EOS R and this camera I had quite a lot of you know thoughts in relation to what camera I would change when I go for mirrorless and the EOS R for me has been a workhorse it's been great I've really found a big difference in my quality of my images as well since I've moved to mirrorless and with the features that are in this the likes of focus peaking it has helped me quite a lot to advance my photos again I made a video as to why I chose this one if you haven't seen that episode I'll link that also to up here and the lens that I use for the majority of my shoots as a landscape photographer is my Canon 16 to 35 f4 lens and this lens is really really good it's tack sharp and it's very very easy to use as well so I never really miss an image once I'm using this lens also this is an EF lens so this will connect on to a standard um, full frame camera or a um, DSLR but I also have this here which is an adapter so it's an RF to EF or EF to RF adapter and that's something that allows me to use all of my old lenses even on a mirrorless camera and that allows me to be able to keep all the lenses like I would have said that I've used before and I'll go through the lenses that I bring with me for this weekend next. So the lens I use quite a lot is my 70 to 200 and I chose this lens which is the f4 over the 2.8 mainly because of its size its weight and its versatility I don't really need to use a 2.8 I'm never shooting portraits so what this gives me is an opportunity to be able to get a 70 to 200 shot and I've used it quite a lot actually particularly around this area over the years from my photography great lens if you haven't got one I'd really recommend it to have it in your bag now the next lens that I have and I've had this lens probably around about five years and it's uh, a Tokina so it's an 11 to 16 lens now it's not designed for a um, full frame camera so I'm pretty limited in relation to what I can use it for but it's 16 mil now you might ask okay why would I use this over my uh, 16 to 35 it's the same focal length well this is 2.8 so I use this lens primarily for astro and that allows me to capture as much light as possible bringing it into the sensor and then I've used this for pretty much all of my astro shots now granted I haven't done quite a lot of astro but when I do need to use it I bring this lens so I brought this lens because I'm here for the weekend as you can see you know the skies are quite clear so I might actually get an opportunity to use it over the weekend here because I'm going to be here at night as well so that definitely comes with me for my weekend trip and the final lens that I bring with me here is a lens actually that I really recommend every photographer uh, should have and it's the Sigma it's the 150 to 600 this is the contemporary uh, it's a phenomenally good lens I bought it to be able to photograph the deer in uh, Killarney but I've used it on so many other occasions in actual fact I used it here one day when I had the opportunity to try the uh, EOS R5 I put this on it and I used it handheld and I managed to get some incredible shots and some incredible fast shots as well in the combination of 
the image stabilization is within the lens and also the R5 has IBIS which is in-body image stabilization. So the combination of both of those giving me the focal length from 150 to 600 is really really good. And if you haven't seen that episode actually I'll link to that episode up here but I'd really recommend every photographer to have this to what you're getting in relation to the cost that it is there as well. It's a phenomenal lens, it's a beast of a lens and it's one definitely worth having. Okay, so that's my main camera and that's all of my lenses that I would bring with me. Now, what else would I bring on a photography trip? So, um, I have this here, which is my DJI Osmo Pocket. And this is something that I use on a regular basis to be able to capture quick images and snapshots from a video point of view, but also I can use it as well as a quick access vlogging camera. It's handheld, it's got image stabilization because it has a gimbal and it shoots in 4K. This seems to be a relatively staple piece of equipment from anybody who's doing photography vlogs and for me, it hasn't failed me. In fact, I actually dropped it into the water on a photography shoot in Killarney on the lakes and while it died for a couple of weeks, powered back up miraculously a couple of weeks later and it hasn't let me down as well since. So this is a really good one. This is the uh, first iteration. There is a second iteration that's come out since, but this works perfectly fine. So I didn't really need see the need to change. Now, next on to filters. And I've had a love-hate relationship with filters over the years. Uh, it's something that I use because when I'm doing my seascape photography, I'd like to be able to control the light. And I've recently moved on to the Nisi set of filters. It's the V7 and the V7 is actually an adapter that comes with this kit. And the V7 actually stays on the front of my 16 35 at all times. So I've got my lens cover here. And within that then I have the V7 adapter. And there is a polarizer that goes onto this and it's a true color polarizer. Very, very good actually. I made another video actually about this system and I'll link to that up here as well if you want to get more information. But what I'm actually using for that as well is some graduated uh, NDs. They're not, um, uh, something that I would you know, say everybody should have, but if you use it from a landscape point of view, I definitely recommend you have some graduated NDs because it allows you to control the light and keep then the foreground as well in, in the right exposure for your shots. Okay, so next is tripods. And this tripod is my workhorse tripod. It's a Gitzo Mountaineer. It is an incredibly expensive tripod. And, you know, I always wanted to get one and I've had a kind of a love-hate relationship as well with this because, you know, they say, careful what you wish for or never meet your heroes. This tripod to me though has been rock solid. I've never really had an issue with it. And what I've also added now since as well are some spikes. So that gives me here an opportunity to screw these into the end of the legs. And then when I'm placing that on the uh, surface, I can stick that into the surface and there's never a fear of it actually falling over. I also have the Gitzo ball head in relation to this. And it's not a geared head, it's a manual head, but it is something again that I swear by, I've never had an issue with, and it's rock solid. I've never had a problem with any shake or movement or anything like that as well so it's a really really good tripod and again like I said I can just stick that into the ground and there's no fear of that moving. Now I also have another tripod which is my Manfrotto. I've had this probably around about six years it's the same tripod I've used for many many years but it's a Manfrotto 190. It's a carbon fiber tripod but as you can probably see by it here it's been through the wars and this is the tripod that I use for my seascape photography. I'll never put the Gitzo in the sea because the salt water and the sand can be quite detrimental whereas this one here I can just use this it's my workhorse like I said I can push it around bunks it around or anything like that and I've never had an issue with this tripod either. It's just that I won't use the Gitzo in the sea so that's my seascape tripod. Now, I also have a third tripod with me as well this weekend, and that's the tripod that you're sitting on at the moment. And that's a Lee Photo Urban. And it's a lightweight tripod, it's a carbon fiber tripod, and I use it on only for holding the camera that I'm recording you on at the moment. Very, very good tripod overall. Never really had an issue with it as well, but I only use it for my vlogging purposes because it is a bit lightweight. It's not designed to take the heavy camera and the heavy lenses. And the camera that I'm recording with you on has been a recent addition. Actually, it's my Sony ZV-1. It's a really, really good camera. It shoots in 4K. It has great focus ability on it as well. The quality is so good. Um, I've actually found that my uh, image and my video image has actually upped its game since I've gotten this camera and I've never really had an issue with it. However, it is actually the second camera that I've gotten because I actually had a bit of a whoopsie on one of my trips. Um, I placed it down, it's quite windy, my own fault. I didn't really have it secure in the uh, stones that it was on at the beach and I started to record and it fell towards me. Hit off a stone, 
and the, because the lens comes out in relation to it, the lens was bent back in and that was the end of that camera. But I liked it so much that I went off and I managed to find a second hand unit actually for a very good price, reason 35 for gas, it was a good price, but I had to replace it with a second ZV-1 and that's a really, really good camera as well. Um, I actually came across this camera from a, a guy called Vic Barry and he swears by this camera. He's did some very, very good reviews in it as well and it really convinced me that it was a camera for me for my vlogging and like I say, it hasn't let me down yet. Now we're on to audio and I use this uh, wireless microphone system here. It's a very, very good uh, system. It's from Lens Go. I also have a Rode system, but ever since I got this, I haven't used the Rode system afterwards because I find that the quality of this is actually equally as good. It also comes with a very handy uh, item, which is a charging box. And within that charging box, I can place uh, this, the receiver that's on top of the camera. I have a second microphone as well, which sits within uh, here. And I can place all three of them into this box plug it in via USB-C and then it charges all of them at the one time. Really, really good product. Again, you know, I made a kind of an overview in relation to that. I'll link to that actually up here if you want to find out more information on this, but very, very cost effective and really, really good quality as well. Um, I don't think I've had a bad issue in relation to audio, except for my own stupidity, of course, but it's a really, really good product and I'd recommend this absolutely. And now moving on to when I get my images from the Air. And this is the uh, DJI Mavic Air 2. As you can see, this is everything. It's really, really small. It comes in this bag. Um, this actually has been a game changer for me. It's not a very, very big drone, but it actually has the ability to have a fair distance that it can fly. It's good in relation to wind. I've got a nearly 35 minute flight time from that. And what I've actually done is I've gone for the fly more pack in relation to this. So I actually have three batteries. And the three batteries, which are, one is in the drone at the moment, and then I've got these two other batteries here. Um, these give me ample time from recording. If I took 35 minutes for each one, then that's a lot of time, obviously, from recording, and I never use all of that. But in case I ever run out of power, what I also got, which is a very handy thing to have, is a little charging station here. And that's a charging station which you can connect in to a um, charger which is a cigarette lighter charger so in the back of my car I can plug that in connects into this and then I can charge on the go so if I run out of power and I'm driving from one location to the other I can then plug that in while I'm driving and bang I've got power again in relation to the next location overall I think you know this is a very very good combination it's something that like I said that I've used on quite a regular amount of my, onto my vlogs and it does give you that different elevation in relation to the footage that you want to catch when you're out photographing now, I also have my GoPro, and this is my GoPro Hero 7. I haven't upgraded to the 8, the 9, or the 10, because the 7 does me perfectly fine. Shoots in 4K, it's fully waterproof. It's very quick and easy to be able to catch it on the fly if I want to capture some candid moments, or I can also use it as well to be able to put it under the water to give that nice perspective when I drop it down and then bring it back up. All I need to do in post then is just reverse the clip, uh, uh, tilt the clip basically and you'll then think that the image is actually starting in the water and coming up the right way up above that. GoPros are workhorses, you know, they're pretty straightforward. They have got their issues. I know some people that are really annoyed with GoPros, but for me, it really hasn't let me down that often and it's something that I always have in my bag. It's small, it's lightweight and it's also on this little handy um, clamp that I can clamp that onto anything at all then whatsoever or I can turn it to get a different angle. I can use that if I wanted to from a vlogging point of view, but it's really, really good. And this clamp actually wasn't that expensive, something that I got actually on uh, Amazon and I've got two of them so I can just clip it on anywhere and then I can leave that sit there and I capture my footage. Now, also, because I'm away for a couple of days, I have my Hanel Cube 2, and this is very, very good. I use this to charge the batteries from my Canon camera, my main EOS R, but this also comes with a cigarette uh, lighter adapter, so I can charge this in the boot of my car, while well, again, once I'm driving from different locations. And if I ever run out of power, I don't need to worry because I can charge up a battery. Now, I have a number of batteries um, for my EOS R, but if I ever get stuck out, I bring this with me, particularly since I'm away from the weekend. Now, I wouldn't normally bring this if I'm going for a day trip, but because I'm here for a couple of days, I'm bringing this with me so I don't get caught. And then another little thing that I have here, uh, it's from Small Rig, and it's an adjustable arm. And the beauty of this basically is that there's one uh, uh, 
knob that you turn and then it makes it solid. However, if I loosen that, the whole thing basically can move. Now, I use that because it has a little three mil adapter. I can put it onto the uh, tripod here and that's what I use to record if I'm ever recording the back of my camera. I can set that up here with its own ball head on the top and I can then show you what my scene is and how I'm taking that photograph. Now, two other items that are always in my bag. One here is a jacket, it's from Rab. It doesn't make a difference what the brand is, but it's a waterproof jacket. It folds up into its pocket. As you can see, it's quite small here. It takes up very little space in my bag. I don't think I'm going to need it this weekend anyway, because there's going to be no rain, but in case I ever get cut out, it's always in the bag and I can quickly put that on and then I'm nice and dry. And that's the jacket. And then I also have this uh, Gore-Tex pants here from Berkhouse and it's a really really good pants because it has a, a clips on the side here which has velcro and a zip so the basically much easier to get on and off instead of having to drag that over your boots and if you want to wear your, your boots or whatever you can put that on and then zip that down and then you're perfectly dry. This is a phenomenally good pants not only to keep you dry but also to keep you warm and it's waterproof you know so that you're not going to get caught out if you're out in rain or anything like that it's not going to become unbearable by the time you get back to the car. And the final two things actually that I have with me, one is a flashlight here, which you can see here. Uh, and then second is a light that I have from Lytra. I often use this if I'm in a dark scene and I want to light myself up. It's really, really bright. Uh, even in this bright light right now, uh, you'll see, you know, how bright that actually is here on the screen well you should do anyway but it's a great uh, piece of equipment always in the bag small lightweight waterproof and it gives me the opportunity to be able to shoot if i get cut out in late night or whatever it might be i also have a head torch don't have it in the bag with me it's actually in the car that's just a standard usb charging head torch and that allows me as well then to be able to find my way if i'm getting up somewhere and heading somewhere before dawn or after sunset and the final thing that's always in the bag with me is this it's a shower cap uh, this is what I pick up if I'm ever staying in a hotel. I always pick up a shower cap from there. But this is very handy because if you're out taking some photos and you see some rain coming, quickly take out the shower cap, place it over the top of the camera, and the camera now is perfectly protected from the elements. And then you can just whip it off, grab your shot, and put it back on again as well. If you don't have a shower cap in your bag, I'd really recommend that you get one and pick it up in any hotel or whatever it might be. So it costs you nothing, but they're very, very handy to have. And because they're elasticated at the end, it goes over the back of the camera as well. Pretty straightforward. Oh, nearly forgot one final thing that I have. Small little first aid kit. Always comes with me. You never know where you're going to need it. Uh, within that, I've got a couple of plasters. I've got a scissors. I've got some um, cleaning wipes and such like that. Now, I think it would have come in very handy on the day when I rescued that gannet with myself and Dave and when we were actually over here in Brandon. Um, but I didn't actually have that with me that day. But ever since that day, I've always made sure that I put this into my bag because you never know. You're better to look for, have, have something uh, near you than be looking for it and not be near you at all. Oh, I also nearly forgot as well my <clears throat> slider, which is a Rhino Traveler. And this is something that I use to be able to give me some cinematic motion as well to some of the shots that I'd use for my vlogs. Uh, very, very good, very, very lightweight, can attach onto the end of a tripod and also as well then has these very handy little clips and legs which slide out here at the side and that gives you a small bit of elevation as well if you want to go from a low to a high area. It also gives it more grip. So yeah, that's it. That concludes what's in my bag. Uh, 2022 weekend edition. I hope you've enjoyed actually, you know, exploring the different equipment that I would use. Um, I'm going to finish up this episode now and I'm getting ready for uh, my weekend of fun with Dermot. As I said, what a background for me to have and what a playground as well for us to be in for this weekend. It's Dermot's first time as well coming here, so I'm excited now to see the wonder in his face when he sees this beautiful area around him for the first time. If you have any questions on any of the uh, gear that I've actually shown here today, please do let me know in the comments below and hopefully I'll see you soon when I continue on my weekend journey here to the beautiful Dingle Peninsula. So until the next time, thank you very, very much. If it's your first time on the channel, hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, the usual things, and I'll see you soon. Schlange voll.